You may not recognize this quiet, wealthy, middle-aged resident of Carmel, California, but you probably know him from the musical group he was once a member of. Hey, hey, with a monkey. Hello. And people say we monkey around. Since the 1970s, Michael Nesmith has worked on his own music, helped create MTV, produced movies like Repo Man, and turned his hand to writing novels. When people say your name, how would you like them to define you? Musician, futurist, entrepreneur? Just never crosses my mind. Um, I don't have any idea of the of the public perception, and don't. I don't. I cannot even imagine the percentage of my thinking that's devoted to it. I don't even. Just never crosses my mind. First and foremost, you have to identify Michael Nesmith as one of the monkeys. Um, no matter what other things he accomplishes, that's always going to be the, uh, the first thing anybody thinks of. When I watched The Monkees, the, he was really the only part of it that I was interested in. Radio veteran Bob Hamilton has known Michael for over 30 years. Michael is the funniest person that I've ever met in my life. And I, I've, I have count among my acquaintances George Carlin and Steve Martin and Cheech and Chong, and nobody is funnier than Michael Nesmith. He is a funny guy. But the adjective that is most often used by critics to describe Michael is visionary, a term he doesn't quite agree with. I'm very wary of the, of the word visionary and, and prophet and prophetic and whatever those words are. I was thinking that Michael was a great balance of art and science, but I don't think Michael differentiates between art and science. I think art and science come together with the fact that he, he is a, um, in touch with uh, true reality. Defining your world is a world of ideas, and defining your world is the world of spirit. And beginning to reconcile things when you look at the camera, you look at uh, something over here, you look at yourself and you say, now that's a spiritual idea. If I can understand that, that will give me something um, to go on, to build my life around. It provides me with judgment, provides me with insight and wisdom, provides me with a way to make a living. In the late 1970s, Michael developed a show called Pop Clips, which he later sold to Warner Brothers, and this became the inspiration for MTV. There had been music video before. I mean, the Beatles made music videos, and, you know, uh, artists in the 60s did to send out to record stores and to do things, you know, when they weren't touring or they, or they weren't out there. Music, the idea of music and film, whatever it was at the time, existed. But Nesmith was really thinking further, thinking about longer form, thinking about narratives and thinking about ways to bring music together with storytelling, visual storytelling. I came up with a music video in the mid-70s. Now, I didn't know what a music video was. Somebody asked me to make a promotional clip of my song, Rio, so I did. There's wings to the thought behind fancy. There's wings to the thought behind play. When I took it over to play it to the promotion men who were going to take this clip around, they all stood up and applauded. Didn't exactly understand what had happened why they were all so excited about this video clip that I had made. Until I began to see that the other video clips that were around were just people standing up and singing their song. And what I had done was taken certain elements, expressiveness, and, and ways to express the ideas in the song spiritually and artistically, and put those in the film as well. That was fun, and it didn't seem particularly novel or innovative to me at the time, but it just seemed like the right thing to do. But it's something to do with the night. Or would you play something like that? You can't play it on radio. Television doesn't want to play it because television has its, has its talk shows and game shows and the stuff that it plays and the cop shows at night. So what do you, how would it do? Well, you know what would make, make sense would be to have, everybody's going to, at some point, going to want to do these things because they're so much fun, there's so much artistry involved in it. You would, you would think that, that uh, you could just put it on television like records are on radio. You just play them sort of one after another, and you just dedicate a cable channel to it. And, you know, it would be sort of like music television. Hey, wait a minute. Why not music television? And there you go. As Rachel turned on the TV, she knew her life would never be the same. There's no question that it, he was ahead of the ahead of the curve on that, and um, in a very, you know, in a very genuine way. There's no prescience involved in it. It's just basically 
connecting dots. You just sort of see the way things together. My mother invented liquid paper. She became very wealthy from it. She was a single woman in Texas, and she was uh, raised me and then turned this idea into something huge. Now, how did she come up with that idea? $64 question. Answer is 23 cents. Very, very simple. She was a secretary, and as a secretary, typed letters, and uh, she worked on manual typewriters. Tick, 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 tick. Electric typewriter comes along. IBM does it. Ribbon's different. Makes a lot of mistakes. Big difference between tick, 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 and lip. And she can't erase this new paper and this new carbon ribbon. So it's a dilemma. In the evening, she takes another job. And what's the job? She's a graphics artist. And when she would make a mistake on a commercial layout, this is long before Photoshop and any of the software, she paints it out. Wait a minute. I could paint out a typing error. It's just not any more complex than that. So she did. Now, believe me, it's a long way from there to the multi-million dollar international corporation that she ultimately sold to a big company in America. But the idea was simple. It was a simple just connecting the dots. In the 1980s, Michael was executive producer on such movies as Elephant Parts and Repo Man. He also set up his own production and distribution company, Pacific Arts. If you go back to Pacific Arts and what he did with the video company and so on, it, marketing, I mean, he knows marketing very well. Uh, he's a businessman. He knows business extremely well. Uh, you could put him as a CEO of any company in, in the world, and he would be successful at doing it. But at the same time, the, Michael's art has taken much greater precedence, and he has always blazed the trail. He's always been on the forefront of something, and it was not a commercial venture that was motivating him, I don't believe. I mean, not that he doesn't want to, you know, do business. I'm writing a book right now called The America Gene, which is about people hitting their personal Las Vegas. Is... Americans come with a potential arc from Tupelo, Mississippi to Las Vegas, Nevada. That just one of the things that happens to people in America. And Elvis was the paradigm. He lived this out. He started off in Tupelo, cool, you know, white guy singing blues songs, great music, making up art and so forth. And he ended up this utter parody of himself in Las Vegas. And I coined the phrase, the personal Las Vegas. He hit his personal Las Vegas in some way. And um, I thought, that is not just Elvis. That's for all of us. That actually is something that can happen to people. And then I began to do a little work on it. This happened like 10 years ago. I started thinking about this. And so the notion slowly began to form in my thinking about what it means to hit your personal Las Vegas. I remember when I hit my personal Las Vegas, I could see when people were hitting their personal Las Vegas. It's not a character flaw. It's just something that happens to Americans. They do things just, just because they can. Mine came in the late 60s and early 70s. I look back at some of the stuff that I was doing, and it was, it was my personal Las Vegas look. The Monkees, brought to you by Kellogg's. Just having gone from who I was to this, this critter that was just absolutely foreign to me. I didn't have any idea who it was. I think I made a lot of people angry, and I think, uh, you know, there was a lot of fallout from it, but not anywhere near so bad as it was just to look back and say, gosh, what in the world would motivate something like that? Michael remains in contact with fans via his own website, videorange.com, which has an impressive catalog of music and video. And it's this digital world with its hyperlinks that excites him these days. Nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time is coming. You can see it in, in every enlightened teacher that you can find, Buddha to, uh, to uh, uh, Buddha. I think Michael's greatest work uh, may not be done yet. Um, I think that he's that he's learning all the time, and that you know, 
um, trying new things constantly, but he's always, he's always on the forefront. When you see that idea and you get it, it grows like a flower. It just grows in the pot. And all you have to do then is be a gardener. You just water it, tend it, let it grow, work. And is gardening hard work? Yeah. Does gardening cause you to sweat and to worry? Yeah. Does it mean, oh, I don't know whether I'll ever make it, am I ever going to be? Yeah. Do you have to do certain things? you have to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and tend things? Yeah. you got to do all that stuff. But the thing you're doing at that point is gardening. You're not, you're not trying to make something come into being. That's the, that's the power of it. That's the magic trick. Michael is always thinking about the future, not the past. Even though the monkeys made him a success, he feels that fame stole something from him. People would come and they would have a certain notion about um, who they were approaching or what they were approaching or what would be proper to say and so forth. And, and so I made a decision a long time ago not to contribute to that. That wasn't a good thing, that that was, a, that that was something that uh, made the transaction and made the interaction less than stellar. So I just, I, I decided I, I wouldn't think about it, and at least for my part, I would just take people as they came.